A little over a year ago, I made this marking gauge and featured it as a project on my website. It's fairly simple and easy to build, but at the time I didn't make a video showing how I did it. Similar to the sanding block from last week, I'm going to do that now. So in this video, I'll be making this marking gauge from start to finish. The marking gauge is basically made with two parts, a dowel and a block. To make the dowel, I'm quickly making a dowel maker. First, I'm drilling 1 8 inch pilot holes. Next, I'll drill quarter inch holes. Then I'll drill a half inch hole. That will be the final size for the dowel. Now it's back to the quarter inch bit to make clearance holes so the dowel maker will cut properly. With the dowel maker finished, I can put it in my vise. And here I prepared a piece of half inch stock maple to run through it. After it's been cut, lightly sanded. When the dowel is smooth, I cut the end off. Now I'm drilling a pilot hole for a screw right in the center of the dowel. I'm using a 3 16 inch washer and screwing it onto the dowel. I can now put that in the drill press and sharpen the washer. You'll want to be careful not to touch the sharpened wheel while it's spinning on the drill press. Also, filing it down sharp like that makes it pretty hot. Here I'm squaring up the end of the dowel on the miter saw and drilling a pilot hole for the screw back at the drill press. Now all I need to do is screw on the newly sharpened wheel. Next I can start working on the body of the marking gauge itself. It is one and a quarter inches thick, one and a half inches wide, and three and a half inches long. The first thing I have to do is drill a half inch hole in the center of the lock. Next I need a three eighths inch counterbore for the head of the screw and a 3 16 inch hole all the way through. I can then split the block on the bandsaw to create clearance so that it will clamp tightly around the dowel. Next, I need two splines in the end to reinforce the block and stop it from splitting apart. I'm cutting these on the table saw and the blade is raised about a quarter inch. The splines themselves are pieces of maple that are cut to about an eighth of an inch thick glued in and then sanded flush afterwards. After the glue dried on the splines, I sanded it smooth. Now it's ready to assemble and to do that I have a 2 inch by 3 16 inch machine screw. I'm just going to slip in. What I'm going to do is get a little bit of epoxy on the head of the screw so it doesn't turn after this. Next, I have a small washer and a wing nut. And just thread that on. So basically now it's finished. All I need to do is take the dowel with the cutter on the end, slip it into the hole. It should slide freely in there without the nut tightened. Set it to the depth I want to mark and then tighten the wing nut. It's ready to mark. The beauty of it is if the wheel does get dull, you can always take it off and sharpen it in the same way you sharpened it before. The last thing to do is to put some finish on. This is strictly optional though. I'm giving mine a coat of linseed oil. I'll renew that finish periodically as it wears out. I let the oil sit for about 10 minutes and then I wiped off the excess. I'm going to leave it to dry overnight before using the marking gauge. Well, that's it. As usual, thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed it.